who stopped by Dawn Dares to Dream today to see what we're all about. Well, let me give you a brief summary of my goal on my channel. Here at Dawn Dares to Dream, I like to inspire and motivate adults to dream again. Because as we go through life and take on our different roles and responsibilities, we tend to put our dreams on the back burner. And my goal here at Dawn Dares to Dream is to help you pick those dreams back up and to pursue them again. So today we are making brunch. You know I've been all about my brunch. I do have a brunch playlist that you should visit where I'm making homemade whipped cream. I'm doing waffles. I'm doing omelets. I have shrimp and grits on my playlist. You gotta go check it out. But today what we're going to do, we are going to make banana nut pancakes from scratch. Yes, I said it, from scratch. Now, all the videos that I've done, my waffle mix, my pancake mix has always been a complete mix that I add things to. But today, the recipe calls for a pancake from scratch because it's such a specialty pancake. I'm also gonna do an omelet because you know I love eggs with my breakfast. And I'm going to make some homemade whipped cream for my pancake and I'm making homemade syrup as well. So I got to get going because there's a lot of different things going on in this dish. So let me tell you what goes in the pancakes. So we have some flour, we have baking soda, we have salt, we have pecans, we have brown sugar, and we also have butter. We have smashed ripe banana. So let me show you what that looks like. So you know when your bananas are getting old and they're falling apart and you're like, what can I do with this? It's not too black just yet. You can make these banana pecan pancakes. So I took the banana, took it out the peel, and then you want to smash it up. And then we have the butter and we have buttermilk that we're going to add in as well. So that's the pancake thing. Then for the um, omelet, we're going to do shrimp with spinach and tomatoes. Of course, it's going to be a three egg omelet with some Philadelphia cream cheese. And that's the omelet. Next, we are going to make the syrup. So we're gonna have some brown sugar for the syrup, some vanilla extract, butter, and some water. And for the whipped cream, it's simply going to be powdered sugar, heavy whipping cream, and vanilla extract as well. So there's a lot of different moving parts here, but I know I can do it and I can do this in less than 30 minutes. I believe I can. Also today, dreamers, our topic is still on the lines of law of attraction because that's the thing of October. So today we are going to discuss how we naturally use the law of attraction and we don't even think about it. I'm gonna highlight examples in my life where I'm using the law of attraction without doing all the key elements that I have been teaching you about in um, the previous videos, because I want to show you how simple it is. So that way, as we transition into looking at the Law of Attraction Action Guide, you can come back to this video as a reference, because there are a lot of things that we do naturally, and natural is the best way to do anything that we are setting our mind to. If we can make it a habit, if we can make it natural, if we can make it just something that we instinctually do, then we are making progress. Dreamers, this is my first time making pancakes from scratch. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ingredients because it's a specialty pancake. But if you take away the thing that's making this special, I think we have one, two, three, four, five, six ingredients. I don't think that's too bad because I add in three extra ingredients when I'm doing my pancake mix. So the complete kind. So I think this is gonna go pretty well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna combine all of our dry ingredients into a bowl. So that was the all-purpose flour. This is the salt. This is the baking soda. We have brown sugar. And then we are actually going to chop up the pecans because we're gonna add those pecans in as well. But they need to be chopped. And I do want us to continue to talk about or begin to talk about our topic of using the law of attraction naturally. And I know you're thinking, huh? There's no way in the world with all these little things that you told me, all these elements that I'm doing this in any natural, instinctual form. But I believe you are. I believe you are. So I'll give you an example. It was Hurricane Rita that had come to Houston, Texas. And before Rita came, there was Katrina in New Orleans. 
And I had not been through a hurricane as an adult here, so I wasn't really sure what to expect. I didn't live with my dad, um, so I didn't have anyone to be at home with because I lived by myself. I didn't really know a lot of people here. And what I did was I just started going to the store to get my little stuff for my, you know, that I needed for my hurricane package while I was in the house. And my best friend called me from Baltimore and she said to me, are you okay with being there through this hurricane? And she said, and I kept telling her, yeah, I'm fine. I'm in the market. I'm buying stuff. They don't have any water, but I'm getting Gatorade. And this is what I'm telling her. I'm in the market picking up what I can. I'm buying dried milk because, and um, dried milk, because I don't even think you can get liquid milk. If I, I bought cereal um, and the catch is, I knew what to purchase because I grew up having little of what we needed. So we knew how to figure out how to get by. And powdered milk was one of those ways. You didn't like it a lot, but it was better than not having milk at all. So I had the powdered milk, I had to eat some cereal, and I'm good, I don't need to buy anything too much. And I had like some Vienna sauces, you know, a little canned meat, and but I didn't have any water, but I was like, oh, I can get Gatorade. So, but she's, in, in the back of my mind, I need you to understand, I would leave if I could leave. I wanted to leave. That was my focus was I want to leave. And that is why I didn't buy any, um, I didn't buy any hurricane supplies up until the end. And then I'm in the store and there's nothing left. But she calls me. She says, if you could leave, would you leave? And I paused. And I said, to be honest with you, yes. I said, but the roads are packed. People are on the roads trying to drive and they are getting stuck on the road. They're running out of gas. And it's so packed on the road that the traffic isn't moving. They have, they have gas trucks that are uh, filling people up because they're stuck. So I was like, I don't think leaving is a good idea. This is, the, the time is too late for that. So she called people and got her family and friends together, some of which were my friends, and pulled together money so I could get a ticket out of here. That ticket, I believe, cost $500. It was like the same day ticket or next day ticket, something like that, but I know it was quick. Now, what I'm trying to convey to you about the law of attraction, this hurricane was on top of us. We had just had, I mean, it was right at our door. We had just had Katrina with all the flooding, so everybody was pretty nervous. I don't live directly on the water, but I was still nervous about what this could do and how this could impact us or impact me, and especially alone, because my dad is gonna be at the building that he works at, making sure the building is safe, so I don't even have anywhere to go. And like I said, I don't know enough people here to know, to, to try to team up some people to stay with them. And to be honest, I don't know if I would've. I like my own space, you know? So, I don't know what I'm doing. And when I explain the situation to her, she finds the money, and I wanna go. But that's the law of attraction. In my heart of hearts, I wanted to go. What I was focused on was how can I leave? And, and I was so focused on it that I was paying attention to what was happening. People were getting stuck on the road. Um, I don't have money for a plane ticket. I made very minimal, minimal money at the time. I think I was making about $6.75 an hour at the time of this hurricane. I had an apartment, I had a car. I had no money for, um, to, for transportation to get out of town that wasn't me driving. So I wanted to leave, was thinking about leaving, and poof, here comes my best friend, who does not have the money, mind you. She didn't have the money to, for me to just come. She had to go scrounge up the money from people and got the money, and I was on a plane, and I was in Baltimore for a whole week, and then I came back to Houston. Side note is Rita didn't do anything, <laughs> and I couldn't afford to be off of work, so I was out of work for seven days trying to be safe, and then Hurricane didn't really do anything. So... There was a downside to that, but the upside was I wanted to go and the law of attraction met me at my need and it met me through a person who I didn't think had enough money. You know, she has her own family to pay for me last minute to leave and the ticket was $500 because it was like a same day ticket. It was something crazy. So, but when you need something, you focus on it in a manner in which you normally don't focus and that focused intention that I've talked about is what pulls that uh, manifestation to you. And you do it all the time when you are in a dire situation where you need 
the thing that you're focused on, it's almost like you will do anything to get it and that's the mindset you have and before you know it, things work out and you have that need. The butter is heating in the pan. I've moved the pancake mixture to the stove area and now we are going to add in our ingredients for our omelet. So it's gonna be a three egg omelet because that makes the omelet nice and fluffy. We are also going to add in some half and half or heavy whipping cream to this so that it'll make the omelet a lot fluffier. So we're gonna also do some Himalayan rock salt. You know, I love that. And we're gonna do some cayenne pepper today. I want it to be a little spicy because I have I have savory because I have the egg itself, but then I have the bacon that's just savory. So I figure I spice up the egg and then I have my salt and I have my three favorite tastes or flavors in my uh, brunch dish today. Now my mother is eating these eggs, but she says <laughs> that she can't handle certain things, but I don't necessarily believe her these days. And I also have to go ahead and get the shrimp cooked because I have to cook, pre-cook the shrimp and then I'll place them in the egg. So I'm gonna place those right here while I am slicing the tomatoes. The tomatoes are not gonna go in the omelet until it's almost done. And then I'll add in the tomatoes. I don't want to really cook my tomatoes. I just want them to be incorporated in the omelet at the end. The spinach, of course, will be um, sauteed up in the pan as I cook the shrimp and they will kind of cook together and they will be added in to the omelet um, towards the end as well. Because to me, an omelet is something that you, you layer your ingredients. There are certain ingredients that are staples in omelets like tomatoes, but you don't want to cook them because then you just cook their, there's nothing to them, they come to mush. So you wanna make sure you add them at the end. Something like spinach, you don't wanna crunch on that and you don't want that to be chewy in your omelets. You wanna saute that prior to. And the same with your meat, you wanna cook your meats up prior to. And if you're doing any onions and green peppers, you may want those raw. I personally like to cook them a little bit. I don't wanna saute them till they caramelize, but I do want to soften them a little bit. So therefore I like to sweat them in the oil and do it that way because I like all of my veggies to kind of be cooked outside of things like um, tomatoes or if I'm gonna put capers in, if I'm adding basil, all that, those kind of ingredients go at the end. Green onion also I would put at the end as well. So let me go ahead and whisk up the egg. My small little whisker is over there, so I'll do this one. I need to add in the heavy whipping cream. I'm gonna use half and half just because this is the little bit left and I wanna go ahead and get rid of it. So I'll just add it all in there. And I usually just eyeball the amount of cream that I'm gonna add into the egg. The next phase in this brunch, we are going to begin to make our brown butter syrup. Literally, there's brown sugar, water, vanilla extract, and butter, and that's it. So to start off, we're gonna add in our water, and then we're going to add in the brown sugar. We're gonna bring this to a boil because we want to melt the sugar. Once the sugar gets melted, we're gonna let it um, not boil anymore, but do more of a simmer and add in the butter. If you keep it boiling, you're, when you add in the butter, you're gonna make a caramel instead of making it a syrup. So you wanna be careful about the timing when you add in the butter. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this on the stove and get this started. The shrimp and the spinach are also over there sauteing. You can hear those popping in the background. And I did wanna let you know, I am gonna add in some mozzarella cheese to our omelet. I just neglected to take it out, so I didn't tell you um, during it. But when we, once the omelet is almost done, that's when we're gonna smear the cream cheese in there. Now, I made the mistake of buying the whipped type because I was thinking about putting it on a bagel or putting it on toast. But for the omelet preparation, what you really want is the one that's in the bar so that you can slice it and lay it in. Because this can be a little bit daunting trying to get the portion out and, and get them all layered evenly. So you wanna buy the one that's in the bar shape. I wasn't thinking when I bought it and I got the, the whipped kind because I like that to spread. But this is not a spreading event, so you need the bar. And then we'll move on to making the whipped cream. I like to make the whipped cream last because it's so temperamental and you want it as cold as it can be because it will flatten because it is homemade whipped cream. It doesn't stand up 
like the canned whipped cream because it doesn't have the air. Now, if I had a mixer where I was mixing this, a standing mixer, I think that it would um, come together better, but I'm using the hand mixer electric, and so it doesn't whip it up, you know, to have as many peaks as it would if I had a standing mixer. So maybe soon, guys, I will actually purchase a standing mixer because I want to do other things like make pizza dough, um, make pasta dough maybe eventually, and I think having a a, more, a stronger mixer is going to aid in my cooking process being successful. But I do want to get back to the law of attraction and how we use it naturally. When we use it naturally, it's always in a time of need. Like we really need this thing to happen. For instance, maybe you need to pay your rent. Like a lot of people with this whole COVID-19 and, 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 and paying rent, they were wondering how were they gonna keep it up with them shutting the world down the way that they did? How are you gonna keep that up? And I believe all of that energy being sent out into the universe is why the packages started to come up, the rent packages, the um, stimulus package, those things happen because people are in need of having it. And that combined focus thought on one thing, paying my bills, how am I going to do it, surfaced and the law of attraction met that need. And you may say, oh, it's not the law of attraction. I don't care what you call it. But when people, like the Bible has a, a verse in there when two or three are gathered together and they um, like basically focus or want something or pray for something, it's going to happen. You know, when they, they come on one accord or something, I, like I told you, I'm not a theologian, but I did go grow up in church. I believe that's the same period. It's not just a Christian thing. When people's mindsets and we bring that energy together, we manifest what we desire. The pancakes will come along really well. I taste a little piece because, you know, I've never made these before. They taste so good. I'm so proud of myself. I'm becoming a little cooker. Yes, I am. I've always desired to, like I keep saying, I've said a lot in my earlier videos, I always desire to be a good cook. And the pandemic has given me an opportunity with all this time I have on my hands to actually perfect that craft. And I'm enjoying my journey and my process. I do want to give you another example about the law of attraction working for me without me doing any of the principles. When I was at work in the beginning, maybe the first year of working at my job, I wasn't very happy. I had a coworker who kind of stirred the pot with a lot of different things going on between my boss or the coworker herself, myself. Now we were cool. I got along with her, but I, I was uneasy at work and I couldn't understand why do I not have peace here? It doesn't make any sense. Where's my peace? And it hit me. My peace was, I didn't have my peace because this particular individual was stirring the pot so that they could be at the job and not really have to do too much work. That's what I feel. So they stir the pot, ask a lot of questions, but never do anything. Tell them to do something. They stir the pot again, ask a lot of questions, never do anything. And before you know it, you realize that it's been months and months and months down the road where they were given an assignment and they didn't do it because they just stirred the pot and didn't do anything. And it was upsetting me. But then I had to realize that I am in charge of my space and I'm in charge of myself and you need to find your peace again. So what I did was I was focusing on that, but I wasn't doing it in a law of attraction way is what I'm trying to tell you. I just knew something was wrong and I needed to fix it. And before you knew it, all the little conjuring and the stirring and the, what she was doing no longer impacted me at all, especially not in a negative manner. I actually got promoted at the job during that time when all of that was going on. So it was very ironic because I honestly felt like she had a better skill set than I did. So if anyone's going to get a promotion, it's going to be her. But it was me. <laughs> um, and I'm very grateful and thankful for that. But that's the law of attraction. I, I decided to, instead of engage in the mess, engage in myself and look within and figure out what I could do for me to have my peace. And music is my piece, to be honest with you. So I brought my music in the world. I either had earphones or I would close my office door and I would just play my music and I would just get my jam on. And that helped me to focus and do my job and be the employee that I know that I am. So that was the law of attraction because I needed peace and I received peace. And it wasn't an easy journey. It took a while for me to get there, but I got there. But that's the law of attraction. So I had the omelet. In the pan it's cooking up looks like the edges are coming along i'm going to turn my oven on broil 
because again, if you've been watching any of my brunch videos, you do know that when it's time for the omelet to cook on top, I put it in the oven because it cooks a lot even, more even than trying to leave it in the pan. And I don't know how to do that flip, you know, so I put it in the oven. So that's a little trick for you guys who don't know how to turn an omelet. Don't turn it. Stick it in the oven and then put your ingredients in it and close it up and you have done your, your job. <laughs> so I'm going to go over here and flip this pancake and I'm actually going to take you guys over here so you can see how the pancakes are coming along. So we're here. Let me show you the omelet. See how it's kind of uh, cooking around here. So it's doing good. I'm going to turn this oven on broil so that I'm ready when it cooks a little bit more. Also, here's our pancake. It's doing really well. I'm about to flip it. And this is our brown butter syrup, if you can see in there as well. We have a lot of different things going on over here. So I flipped the pancake and look, it's so nice color. I am doing it. I'm doing it today. I'm doing it. <laughs> so, and I have, I think enough batter for one more. I have one pancake in the oven. I mean, in the microwave already. That's where I store my stuff as I'm cooking it. My bacon that I love, love, love is also here in the oven. And so we're going to go back over here so that you can see how I make this whipped cream because it looks like everything's coming along nicely and we will need that whipped cream. Soon. The omelet is done. So I just wanted you to see what, whoop, I don't want to lose it, see what it looks like before I close it up. So I put the tomatoes in, there's the spinach in there, the shrimp in there, the cream cheese, and then I put the mozzarella on top. And to be honest, you don't really need the mozzarella cheese, but I like the stringiness of it and that's why I added it because the cream cheese has enough flavor for you for the dish. Because you know mozzarella cheese really doesn't taste like much of anything. But the cream cheese is where the money's at. So I've also diced up some green onions. So I'm going to put those in here as well. And then I'm going to use leave some aside for gone. Let me show you how I close it. I just take it and flip it. And you see how pretty the other side is? It's not burnt at all because I cooked it from the top and the bottom. So now we're going to make the whipped cream. So we're going to use a cup of heavy whipping cream and you want to make sure your bowl is cold so I put it in the freezer and we're going to add in a tablespoon of powdered sugar and then a teaspoon of vanilla extract and we're just going to stir this until the whip whip whips. We're done. Mm. I love homemade whipped cream. I love it. I'm going to go over here and have that one pancake left, and I'm going to flip it. I believe it's ready now. Brunch is almost ready. I have the pancakes. I have my omelet here, and I'm going to do a little trick when you don't have, like, the bag to squeeze out your um, whipped cream. You stick it in the bag and you cut the corner off and you squeeze it out. So I'm gonna see how well this works for me today. It's my first time trying it myself. I've seen it many times in the restaurant. <laughs> so we are about to see what's gonna happen here. Gotta get it all down into one corner. Mm. Mm. Oh Lord. I don't know my fingers, but it tastes so good. All right, so you, which, which side am I squirting out of? This one. All right. I need to cut it. The tip, see? This is a Ziploc bag. So now, well, let me move this out the way. See, now I have my, see, I did it. Now I have my free <laughs> a pancake. And then we're going to sprinkle some confectioner's sugar on here. Look how beautiful that looks, yes. And I also am making myself a drink. I'm making a Baileys and coffee. So I'm gonna get that Baileys and bring it over here and make my coffee drink. I already brewed my coffee and we'll be all done. So I have my coffee. I'm gonna place an ounce of Baileys in it and then top it with the whipped cream. Maybe I'll do another half an ounce. There we go. And then we 
I go to add the whipped cream again. Look at that! That's so cute. I do have a little mint. So I'll give her a little mint sprig. <laughs> lovely, lovely, lovely. Okay, dreamers, we are all done here. We have so much going on. Oh, my whipped cream slid. <laughs> It slid off. Okay. It's sliding. It's sliding. But that's the banana pancakes with the pecans and bacon. And this is our omelet with shrimp and tomatoes and spinach. And this is the brown butter syrup on the side. And we have our wonderful Baileys and coffee. So you guys enjoy your Sunday. And there's one last manifestation I want to talk to you about where I did not really use logically that the principles of law of attraction when me and my son's dad we split and me and my son were living in an apartment we were in that apartment for six months total time but I, I don't know um, when it happened but I decided that I needed a, a home instead of an apartment and I did not know how to purchase a home no one in my immediate uh, family that I guess I could get advice from here in Texas had purchased a home my dad had, and he's the only one who's here. I just didn't know what to do, and but I did know that you need down payments and things of this nature. And I also knew that I didn't have money, <laughs> and I knew I didn't have good credit. But I wanted a home. I did not think about the law of attraction. I did not write down what I wanted a home. I did not do all this. I knew I wanted a new development home because they have these things called tree roaches, these big roaches that fly and they live in trees and I, I'm scared of them. So I figured if I lived in a new development, you know how your trees are small, it would be a while before those big old roaches would come along. <laughs> this is my logic, okay? So I didn't care how far I had to go. I just knew I needed a new development with small trees or no trees at all. And that's how I thought. So I said, okay, I want a house. I went to the bank and the bank was like, well, you need this amount of money and this and this and that. And I went, mm, if I have to get a house their way, I'm never owning a home. So I said, that's not going to work for me. So, okay, so what can I do if that's not going to work? How do I do this? I had been getting these mailers at my home where the people, they were saying no money down. And they were saying um, they would work with your credit and the mortgage payment was low. And I was like, I kept throwing them in the trash because I thought they were like spam stuff, you know, scam, spam, whatever. So I kept throwing them away. But when I went to the bank and they told me all those requirements, the next time I got one of those flyers, they kept coming. I I said, you know what? I called, I made an appointment, I came out here where I live now, and I looked at the homes with the gentleman. And literally that day we decided on the home that I wanted. That day I gave my earnest money which was only $500. And by the way, I didn't even have $500. I had to call my dad and go, hey, do you have $500? Can I get $500? And he said yes. So I got $500 from him, uh, transferred into my account, paid them. And like in a month or two, I had a home. And the process was so smooth moving out of my apartment complex. I told him I had purchased a home and I was trying to get out and how much would it cost? And they gave me all these numbers. And I was like, oh my God, I'm not gonna be able to pay them all that. And they said to me though, if you get if you get out as fast as you can, like this was January, because I moved in here in January, and we rent it in that month, that next month, like we rent it, you won't owe us anything. This is how the law of attraction works. I got out of that house, that house was in pretty good condition. Bam, they rented it, and I didn't owe them anything. And I got this home because I had focused intention. I knew I need I didn't want to keep living in an apartment. Me and my son were living on top of each other. That's all that I saw every day. And I knew I needed those circumstances to change. My son was about two, three years old at the time. And I needed that to change. So I thought about that and I thought about that. And I'm like, well, how can I get a home? That's a natural way of activating the law of attraction. Being focused on the thing that you want, not being concerned about what you don't want, and going after the thing that you want. We do this naturally, is what I'm telling you. But what we don't know, there's an element or there's a law called the law of attraction that is helping us get what we want because we are um, obeying the principles of the law. And that's all that I have to say on the subject. Um, I was about to dig in here to eat this food because it looks really good and my mother's waiting because I know she wants some. And I'm just glad I got to make my drink today. And I know I didn't do this in my normal format how I would 
present information, but it's because this information means so much to me and I want the world to understand it, especially those who have no idea about it um, and those who are really skeptical of it. Because this principle is woven into all of our spiritual practices, it's woven into all of our religions, and there are some who are winning at it, and there are some who aren't, and I feel like the ones who aren't should know why the others are winning. So if you like this video, give me thumbs up. Remember that the share button is down here so you can share this to your social media platform. There's a share button with an arrow. You can share this to your social media platform and let people know about this video about Dawn Days of Dreams so they can get to know me as well. Also, um, leave a comment if you have any questions. And you need to go ahead and download that Law of Attraction Action Guide because next week is the week where we're beginning to go through the 10 keys. These 10 keys are going to help you to understand what your blocks are and how to overcome them, techniques that I use. So you want to get those 10 keys because otherwise you're not going to know what we're talking about because all of my referencing is going to be referencing, all my references are going to reference the action guide. So go get it. It doesn't cost you anything. So just go to my website, dawndaysofdream.com. There's a link in this description for this video. Um, click on that or type it in your URL, whatever you want to do, but go get it. Scroll down to the bottom of my website, register with your name and your email address, and I will email you the action guide. One last thing, my face is going to be up here in a circle. Click on my face, select the gray bell, select all, and that way you'll be subscribed to my channel if you haven't already subscribed. And you will be notified to all the new content that I place up here to YouTube. Have a great day, dreamers!